Hi, everyone. The Rich Podcast. Today, I'm with my good friend and co-host, Mason. What is up, guys? And welcome to part two of our mark draft. Uh, last time, we did picks one through 17. And for those who are watching on YouTube, you can see the draft board. Reminder, no face cam, so that way the draft board is the most clear you can see. And if you're listening to this on Spotify, iTunes, whatever it may be, uh, we'll be very clear with our selections. Um, just a recap, the last couple picks, we had Justin Fields going to the Patriots, Micah Parsons to the Cardinals, and Gregory Saul, Reg- Gregory Rousseau to the Raiders. And I'll be doing the even number picks as last time. So I'll begin part two of this mock draft podcast episode with 18 with the Miami Dolphins. So, so far the Dolphins, we had them take um, Penny Sewell, um, offensive tackle. And for me, you look at this Dolphins offense, and I really like what they have a wide receiver. I think that Mike Isicki is an elite tight end. The dude is insane. Watch his highlight tape if you haven't. Devontae Parker is a great number one wide receiver. Preston Williams is a good young guy. And I feel like that this Dolphins team can coach up good wide receivers. But I do think Miami goes offense, and I think they take Najee Harris, running back out of Alabama. I recently saw this on a Dolphins fan page about them going for running back, and I really like that choice. Um, I think that Miami needs a good running game. They really didn't have one. They have Matt Breida, who's more of a rotational guy. Jordan Howard didn't work out. So I think that the Gillen Harris from Alabama, I like Najee Harris. He's good, and I think he'll help this Dolphins offense. Yeah, I really uh, like this pick. You reunite him with um, Tua Tonga Vailoa. I think that's a cool thing um, when you think about it, and I think it's just the perfect fit. I feel like their defense is pretty set in stone. Um, their offense needs a little reworking. Um, and I, we went offense line, so you already you protect Tua. And then on the board, you have Nahi Harris, who I think is the best um, non-quarterback or offensive lineman, uh, offensive player on the board. And I feel like his – like, he, you watch his games, and, like, I remember watching him in the playoffs and just throughout this year, and this dude's insane. I mean, he he's, like, two-something, two and he's, like, hurdling dudes like it's nothing. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, he's running over people. His uh, footwork is crazy. The way he's able to um, evade people and juke people, very smooth. And um, I really like Nahi Harris, and I really like this fit. Yeah, um, I'm glad we're in agreement there. I like the two and him reuniting. I forgot about that. Um, but Mason, you have pick 19, which is the Washington football team. So last draft or uh, last mock draft, we went with um, Kyle Trask out of Florida. But I feel like this time um, with Mac Jones on the board, I feel like this is a good um, good place for him to fall. I feel like the Red, or the excuse me, the Washington football team might bring back Alex Smith on a one year deal. And if he were to uh, mentor Mac Jones, I don't think Mac Jones is definitely not ready to play just yet. But I feel like if he was to learn under a guy like Alex Smith or maybe or they brought back Taylor uh, Heineke <laughs> or I forgot how you say it, but um, uh, they brought back him, too. So I feel like if you have Mac Jones uh, compete with one of those guys um, and learn under one of them, I think he could be something special. Um, his the big question mark on him is his mobility. This dude can't move out of the pocket at all. But I mean, he's got a big arm pretty accurate so as long as they build a solid offensive line around him I don't think he'll they'll have to worry too much about his mobility but yeah Mac Jones going 19. I really love Mac Jones um his play style is really great I like his leadership he's a guy that looks like he can have fun but also get to work Washington's really building up the culture of Ron Rivera in that defense I love Mac Jones here um, I could see Jones going as early as, say, 12 to San Francisco, but I like him here to Washington. 20 of the Bears. I'm not a big fan of Sean Bateman, but I have him going to Chicago. Uh, I think this is where I would take Bateman 20 onwards. I'm not the biggest fan of him, but Bateman has a big play potential, and he shows it. I just don't think he's very consistent, but Chicago's planning on losing 
uh, not playing, but the point is Allen Robinson in free agency. And I feel like Bateman's going to do really well in Chicago if he were to be in a Bears uniform. Um, the Chicago culture is kind of a mess right now. And I feel like if you get Bateman a potential big play wide receiver, that can really help fans just kind of cheer and get happy about the selection. You kind of saw that last year with the Vikings when they took Justin Jefferson. He had those big highlight plays, and the Vikings didn't have that great of a record, but I feel like they still had some exciting plays, and I feel like you need that uh, with Chicago. Yeah, if Allen Robinson does leave, I um, I really like this pick because you'll be left with Daryl Mooney, who's a pretty solid deep threat, and then oh, Anthony. He's so good. Yeah, Anthony Miller, who's not – not very Anthony Miller wants to be Daryl Mooney, <laughs> but he's not there yet. <laughs> um, but no, Rashad Bateman, um, he's like I've, this is the biggest what if uh wide receiver for me because um he can be either hit or miss. I feel like I feel like he he's a guy who makes a ton of big plays, but there are some question marks about his consistency um and things like that. But I do like this pick because I feel like um if A Rob does end up leaving, you kind of have to fill that gap with someone. So, yeah, Rashad Bateman, uh, going to the Bears, I like that. Yeah, um, I think it could be a really good sleeper pick. Uh, who do you have the Colts at 21? Um, speaking of sleeper pick, um, I'm not sure where this guy's ranked, but um, after his senior um, senior uh, pro, I forget what it's called, the Reese's Senior Bowl or whatever it's oh, called. Oh, the Senior Bowl. Yeah, yeah that's kind of like a free thing to the combine, which – this year, there's a lot more impact with that because there's no combine. But, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so I, I viewed um, a lot of that. And watching this guy, his name is Kadarius Tony. He's a wide receiver out of Florida. Um, he His his route running is ridiculous. Um, he he reminds me of um, a Keenan Allen. He had a couple drops. Um, I feel like you're going to get that a lot with young guys. But something you can't teach – is his route running it's insane it looks like stefan diggs and keenan allen hybrid i mean he's he's elusive um he makes guys turn their heads like where did he go like stuff like that uh if you if you guys want to see some crazy route running look his tape up um and i feel like if ty hilton ends up leaving this would just even make more sense but i feel like um with carson wentz coming there i feel like the colts are kind of going all in because they have a solid offensive line and they want to just um, get more talent for Wentz to throw to. Yeah, I really love this Tony pick. T.Y. Hilton is good. He's on the decline at you know that wide receiver position. And Michael Pittman, I did really like him his rookie year. I, I think that you got to go for the wide receiver. So I agree with that, Mason. 5.5, that is the number of the sack leader in the Tennessee Titans. The Titans had <laughs> no pressure last year. So at 22, Tennessee Titans get Quiddy Pay out of Michigan. I really like Quiddy Pay. Um, he's a really great player. I like his explosiveness. Uh, the Titans, I like the offense. Derrick Henry, A.J. Brown, Ryan Tannehill, all very nice and efficient. But you need pressure on the defense. I thought about wide receiver here, but Tony's off the board. Same with Bateman. Um, so, yeah, I'm going Quiddy Pay, edge rusher from Michigan to the Titans. Um, that's what I have to say for this selection. Yeah, uh, this pick just makes a, a ton of sense. Um, the Titans, their biggest need was a pass rusher um, because they they signed a guy, Jadavian Clowney. He really didn't play much, and then when he was playing, he wasn't doing anything um, too spectacular. Um, but, yeah, the Titans, like, they're one of their biggest downfalls last year was not getting to the quarterback. And like you said, five and a half sacks for your top uh, edge rusher is just absolutely unacceptable. And I think Quiddy Payne's <laughs> extremely underrated. Um, I could see this guy being a stud for the Titans. And I think this fit is um, amazing. Yeah, I'm really uh, a fan of this. Um, Mason, since you um, – are the bigger college football watcher on the two of us. What do you like about Quiddy Pay's game? It was like one thing that, you know, sticks out to you. Cause I know you mentioned like Kadarius Tony with his route running, but is there anything about Quiddy Pay that you really like in his game? Um, his bull rush. If you guys know what a bull rush means, it's kind of like when you just like basically attack the offensive lineman and just try to use your strength to basically push him over. I think Quiddy Pay's uh, bull rush ability 
is pretty um, spectacular. Um, he's a big guy, a uh, massive guy. That's like with all defensive linemen, but this guy really knows how to use his strength. Um, I'm not comparing him to Chandler Jones, but he he has similar uh, tendencies with his bull rush where he tends to use his long arms and his strength um, to basically just bully these offensive linemen. But, yeah, that's pretty much what I like a lot about Quiddy Pay. All right, sounds good. So who do you have the Jets at 23? I had Zach Wilson – Going with the Jets at two, but now you get to have the Jets pick at 23. You know, I think the Jets, I feel like they're in a situation where they just need help everywhere. Um, but <laughs> we got a guy that um, is going to be their quarterback of the future, and I think that guy needs someone to compliment him. So I'm going to go Travis Etienne, um, running back out of Clemson University. This guy, I think he's extremely underrated. I, a lot of people are talking about Nahi Harris, but – I don't think enough attention is going on Travis Etienne. I'm not a big fan of taking running backs in the first round, but Nahi Harris and Etienne um, are kind of like these mid to late picks. So I feel like you're not taking that big of a risk on them. And I feel like these guys are like very above the rest of the running back class because Nahi Harris is more the the power kind of guy. Travis Etienne's an extremely good receiving back. Um, he's also a, a very good elusive runner like Nahi Harris. And I think if you're going to build – um, your offense with Zach Wilson, I think you got to start off by giving him a lot of uh, talent to work with. Yeah, um, I'm usually not a big fan of taking running backs in the first round, but I feel like this running back class is really shallow. There's mm-hmm. not a lot of talent. Like you can usually find gems. Like you look at Alvin Kamara, James Robinson. Those are very good backs in the NFL who teams got late or in James Robinson's case undrafted, but. If you look at New York, they're trying to build this foundation. I like the um, Travis and TN pick. I like him. I'll give, like, Nahi Harris probably, like, a 8.5 out of 10. And I'll give ETN, like, an 8 out of 10. I think, you know, they're both good. They're not fantastic players, but they're very stable. So, yeah, I like that pick for the Jets. And then the Steelers at 24. This is a really hard one because Big Ben is returning – they're losing Juju Smith-Schuster, but you have other wide receivers. Chase Claypool is great, and there's another one I'm forgetting the name of. Uh, who's the other Pittsburgh wide receiver? Um, um, Deontay Johnson. Yes, him. Um, and then Travis Etienne's off the board. So offense, I don't know if you go anywhere else, but you do have the offensive line. I want to take Samuel Cosme here with uh, the Pouncey Twins retiring. The Steelers lose a really big piece of their offense up front. And I like Cosme. He's a very good tackle, and he's played at Texas, who's used to the bright lights. So I think he could transition well to Pittsburgh. I really like that pick. The Steelers have been a successful team for very long because they draft smart. So I think you go offensive line here at 24. You say, okay, we can develop this guy. And that's what I have for Pittsburgh at 24. You also look at this AFC North. Uh, There's a lot of good pass rushers in the division. Miles Garrett of Cleveland. Carl Lawson has some potential at the Bengals. And the Ravens have some good people up front. So I think if you're Pittsburgh, uh, offensive line is a big need. Yeah, I think um, it's a big need. You're losing Marquise Pouncey to retirement. And you're also probably losing um, your starting left tackle, Andra, on Alejandro Villanueva, because of their cap situation. I think it's going to be pretty hard to re-sign him, especially if they want to bring back a guy like Juju. Um, I, I would love Nahi Harris here, but I feel like it's going. I feel like they'd have to trade up in order to get him because of his draft stock's rising pretty high. Um, there's no real receiver I would go here and – Overall, offensive line is just a need that they have, so I really like that Samuel Cosme pick. Thank you. Yeah, I don't – and I think running back's not going to really help the Pittsburgh team. If Big Ben struggles to throw, then teams are going to be focused on the ground game. So, yeah, I think offensive line is the best fit here. Yeah, so I'm going to hop in to the Jaguars pick. Um, we had them obviously taking Trevor Lawrence. I would love to see a Travis Etienne reunion, but they have James Robinson and he's off the board. Um, I feel like there's no receivers here that I think they would end up taking at 25. Um, not even like an offensive lineman. So for what we have on the board, I'm going to go a uh, defensive guy. I'm going to go uh, Christian Barmore. I feel like I mean, you have Ooh, Jeremiah okay. Awusa up there, but I feel like they have Miles Jack and uh, 
other solid guys on the um on the linebacking core, but they their defensive line is kind of hit or miss. They have Taven Bryan, who they drafted a couple years ago, really hasn't amounted to much. Uh, they had Clavon Chasen, who they drafted last year, hasn't amounted to much. Um, they have Josh Allen, who has amounted to a great, um, a, a pretty solid uh, edge rusher. And I think if you pair him with Christian Barmore, who's more of like a nose tackle, kind of can stop the run. I think that's a good fit because you have your solid edge rusher. Then you have a guy who can stop the run. And I think with what's on the board and what they need, I think this is a good fit. Yeah, I like that pick a lot. The Jaguars, you mentioned some of, some of the players they took last year. I just think they need to grow. Josh Allen, Kale Von Chase on. Uh, who's mm-hmm. the secondary player they took? The corner. Oh, C- I like C.J. Henderson a lot. C. I think he's Henderson. really good. Yeah, a lot, but a lot of these players have to develop. So I think with mm-hmm. Urban Meyer coming in, those guys are going to get boosted. And I think that you have to go with D.T., I like that 25. I think that's good positional value. Defensive tackle, I don't think you take like really that early, but I like it mid, late first. Um, the Browns at 26. I'm going to give them Jeremiah Luso Kamara. Um, I really like him out of Notre Dame. I just, you know, 26 seems like a fall to him, but I really don't see him going any earlier. I think all these teams, uh, you look at Jacksonville, Pittsburgh, New York, Tennessee. Colts, Bears, Washington, they all have great linebackers. Maybe Jeremiah Wusso Kamara goes to Washington, but I have him falling to the Browns. I think that's a really good choice for Cleveland. They have a really nice offense, and I think that the defense just needs that captain. So I think he's a very stable player. He reminds me a lot of like a Roquan Smith, where Smith has not been an elite player in his NFL career, but he's been pretty good and he's stable. And I think that's what you need, especially with today's offensive heavy league. You just need a player who's going to go in there and do their job. And I think this is a huge steal for Cleveland. We see that a lot in the NFL players drop down. and A lot of teams have great linebackers. So I have the Browns taking him at 26. Yeah, uh, I think I would. I like this pick a lot. If I was uh, the Browns, I would definitely love this pick. Um, they lost Joe Schobert to the Jaguars, um, who I mentioned earlier. That's another uh, solid linebacker they have on uh, their team. And uh, so, yeah, Jeremiah Awusa, I feel like linebacker is probably the Browns, one of the Browns' biggest needs because I feel like they have a solid secondary. Um, they have Miles Garrett. Um, you could always use another edge rusher, but I feel like there's not – I feel like Jeremiah here, it's just hard to pass up on because it's like very good value for where you're getting him. Um, Offense is already set. And I like what you said about him being stable because I also agree. I think he's a very stable prospect. I think I think, you know what you're getting out of him. I feel like his his ceiling isn't super high, but his floor isn't super low. I feel like he's a mid tier guy, Mm -hmm. but like I I feel like he can still get the job done. So I really like really like that pick. Yeah, um, I like that. He's a very stable player, and I think that's what the Browns need, especially with the culture. Uh, who do you have with the Ravens at 27? I'm interested to see what you go with this. Um, after certain reports come came uh, coming out, and actually not a lot of people talking about it recently, um, Orlando Brown Jr. requested a trade because uh, he wants to be paid left tackle money and wants to play left tackle even though he said it's not for the money, but it, it kind of is. Um, yeah, Ronnie Staley's there, a phenomenal left tackle, so the Ravens are definitely would rather have him over Orlando Brown. So I feel like Orlando Brown's going to get moved this offseason. So I'm going to go Jalen Mayfield, uh, tackle out of Alabama. I feel like you can never you can never go wrong getting your uh, quarterback more time to throw, and especially in a situation where um, – Lamar, I mean, excuse me, Orlando Brown is uh, requesting a trade. I feel like it just kind of the stars align with this pick. Jalen Mayfield, he's not really talked about a lot, but uh, Alabama produces a um, a lot of solid uh, tackle prospects. <clears throat> you know, guys like Jedrick Willis going last year, he turned out to be good. And, um, and I really like this pick. Yeah, I love that pick. Um, I, I That's what I would have done. Um, Ravens are one of my favorite teams. But I really don't like how they're not paying Randall Brown. Just pay him. Offensive line, we've talked about it, that how it's something you have to address. Um, so I really don't like how they're not going to – and he, I just wish the Ravens would pay him the money. With that being said, I like Jeremy Mayfield. Don't know too much about him, but I do like this fit for Baltimore. 
So that's what I have to say about that selection. Um, 28, this is a player that we um, had going higher when we did our last mock draft. But he's falling a bit, but I think that the Saints could really use Asante Samuel Jr. here. Um, there's been trade rumors about Marshawn Lattimore, one of the corners, getting traded this offseason. I, I think that'll be a bad move, but if it does happen, Samuel's a great replacement. Uh, corner out of Florida, he helps that secondary. Um, I don't see anywhere the Saints go. They could go wide receiver, but Sean Payton seems like a guy who trusts in the young playmakers there. The offensive line is good. You have Alvin Kamara. Defensively, linebacking core is nice. Um, you have Cameron Jordan off the edge. You, this is just a really great defense with the Mario Davis in the middle. And I think you just need a corner. And then you have an elite defense, uh, a, a corner opposite of Adam Moore. So Asante Samuel, I just really like this for the Saints. I thought about going quarterback. I don't see Kyle Trask going in. Uh, round one, I think that would be very ridiculous. I think that would be a huge reach. And I think that Samuel is a corner who might go higher than some people think because of his name brand. His father, Asante Samuel, played in the NFL. So I like Samuel Jr. as a player, and I have him going 28 to the Saints. And I think Samuel's going to be like a high second-round pick. I could see him going to like the Bengals or something, but I think the Saints get him at 28. Yeah, I think the Saints last year, they had a lot of inconsistent secondary play. You had games where Marshawn Lattimore was playing well, then other games where he wasn't. Janoris Jenkins was extremely inconsistent last uh, last season. And I think Asante Samuel, um, he has the name, but not but only that, he's a very good player. Um, he, he went to Florida State as well, which is known for producing um, very high-quality defensive backs such as Derwin James and Jalen Ramsey, guys like that. Um, and I think, I think his technique is sound. Um, I overall really like, uh, how he plays. I kind of forgot about him. I'm not going to lie, but, um, him going to the saints, I think that'd be a, a really good fit just because the saints are in a weird, uh, predicament where they really can't spend a lot of money. And I feel like if you have, uh, Lat if, especially with Samuel playing the cornerback two spot, I feel like he could learn a lot under Lattimore. Because Lattimore is inconsistent, but he's still a very, very solid player. Um, and he's only inconsistent like a couple of games. It's not like he's always inconsistent. And uh, But, yeah, I really like this pick. Thank you. Yeah, I like what you said about that, and I, I agree. Um, he's not – Samuel's not a player who I think will flash, but I think he's a player that will fit the scheme. And then, Mason, you have the Packers pick at 29. 29. Um the see after watching the NFC Championship game, my mind wants to go a, a fighty Melifon woo, but I'm gonna go Nick Bolton here, um, just because of the okay. fact that they lost Blake Martinez um last year in free agency, and they just recently released Christian Kirksey, who was their linebacker one. So they really have a big gap in that linebacker spot, and it's not even just a linebacker spot; it's the fact that their run defense is horrible, and I feel like they need a guy like Nick Bolton who who's a very good uh, play recognizer. He can track down the ball. Not amazing in coverage, um, but his tackling ability and run run stopping ability is something that's that the Packers, I think, are going to be very interested in just because of how bad they were at it last year. I could see them going corner after seeing what happened to Kevin King. <laughs> um, but I think, I think linebacker is just a bigger need because it's literally just a void that they have no one filling right now. Yeah, I like that pick. Nick Bolton, that sounds like such a Packers player name, such a, like a guy from the Midwest. I love that fit. He, I don't know that much about him, but I've heard good things about him. He's a very solid player, and I just like that fit. So the kind of that chill type of vibe, I love that for Green Bay. Uh, the Bills here at 30. Um, I think that they could use some more edge pressure up front. Ed Oliver is looking like a big bust, big defensive tackle. Two years ago, he was, like, going to be the next, um, like, Aaron Donald. He hasn't panned out. Um, so that's not working the best. And then also up front, you have A.J. Epineza from last year, who's not the greatest. So I think they go Joseph Osai out of Texas. I really like that move for Buffalo. Their offense is fantastic. 
So I just think you get better on the defense. And um, with these back backers, the Bills and the Packers picks, <laughs> um, both of these teams, you know, lost the championship game. And I think that's because of the defenses, more Green Bay than Buffalo. But I think both of these picks are, are really good additions to two really great teams. Yeah, Joseph Asai, uh, I like what you said. Um, I feel like it's never bad to have uh, too many edge rushers, and especially when you don't really have that guy um, on that Bills uh, defensive line that's really stand out. Um, the Bills are actually in contention for J.J. Watt, so we have to see how that plays out. But um, Joseph Asai is still a great pick, even if J.J. Watt does go there, because I feel like that gives you a young guy to build around because Ed Oliver, he's he's not looking amazing. He's looking like a guy who's like – He's just average. Um, he's not He's not doing anything amazing. He's just kind of doing his job, not really going above and beyond. Um, and Joseph Asai, I think, is a guy you – the first year you can play him a little bit, see what he does, and then the second year just kind of give him the keys to the defensive line and see what he does. But I really like that pick. Thanks. And then, Mason, your last pick of this mock draft will be the Chiefs at 31. Uh, who do you have them taking? So, for the Chiefs at 31 um, – a lot of people might think corner here, but I'm going Trayvon Morig. Uh, they have they have two solid safeties already, but um, Tyron Matthew he he he's listed as a safety, but he more lines up as a nickel corner. Um, he he rarely does play a lot of safeties; more of like a lines up on a linebacker or a, a slot guy. So he's like that nickel position. And uh, Trayvon Morig, he kind of reminds me of Anton Winfield, where he's just like everywhere on the field type of player I really like um really like him and he's actually shot up a lot on the draft boards before this he was I believe he was projected like a second round pick but recently a lot of people are having him late first round and I really like this fit overall just because I feel like the Chiefs um their offense with Patrick Mahomes Kelsey and Hill your offense is always going to be amazing and your defense you can just you got to keep improving it I mean your defense got absolutely slaughtered (laughs) by the Buccaneers (laughs) Um, same with the offensive line, but I don't really see an offensive lineman worth taking here. Um, and I really like Mo Rig. I like that pick. And the final pick of this draft, we're going the opposite. So um, the team that won the Super Bowl, the champions, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, um, their defense is perfect. Todd Bowles is staying there, I believe. The defense has so many young players. I thought maybe edge rusher, but I think – Tampa Bay, you know, kind of their approach, look at Bruce Arians, there's just like, we're going to go back, we're kind of going to be aggressive. And I think they go Terrence Marshall Jr. out of LSU. Um, and that will conclude the mock draft. Um, but, yeah, I, I just like Terrence Marshall too. Um, that uh, team. And as you can see here, here's the recap of our draft. But, yeah, I think Tampa Bay just loads up on the offense to get more playmakers. Um, and I think they try to run it back. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, the plan for more mock drafts is we'll probably do another one. We can maybe do maybe around two or three mock draft, which I think could be potentially cool. The next podcast episode, we will be talking about teams and where they should locate to. Um, it's going to be a fun one, but I just want to get – Uh, Another mock draft out there now that we're getting kind of close to April a bit. Uh, Mason, thank you so much for joining me today. Yep, yep. Always fun to do these mock drafts. It really is because I feel like you get something different every time, but you still kind of get, um, you still kind of get the uh, same feel for it. So until then, uh, take care, everyone.